All right, let's get started. So we're going to be finishing up the blocks today. And one thing I kind of want to start on is cracks. It's something I've been talking about for a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I do those on my models. So I just use the Orb Cracks brush. This is a brush that you can actually just find online. I don't believe it comes with ZBrush, but you can find it just as a quick download. Throw the uh, brush in your ZBrush so that you can use it. I use it fairly stock one. I do make two changes to it though. One is if you go up to our brush uh, options up here, down under tablet pressure and size, uh, I believe the default is up around here somewhere. I just move it down to all the ways down to the bottom. That just gives me a, a bigger range with the, the pressure on my tablet for pressing. And then under stroke, and lazy mouse, I have it set to 55. It's normally set to, I believe, three or something like that. So it gives me a longer tail behind it as I pull so I can kind of make adjustments as I'm going uh, and gives me a little bit higher control over it. But other than that, everything else is just stock on the brush. Start with this one, solo it out. Slowly pulling my other window in over here, don't want that. So I keep my size low to start. That. I don't want really huge cracks in here, but just a little bit to add some interest. Now I want to make sure these go up and in. My cracks tend to be a lot of trial and error, just kind of playing around with it, seeing what I like, seeing what I don't like, etc.
And then that brush by itself isn't, it's a good starting point, but you don't want to kind of just use that for the cracks. You want to kind of push it further. So I'll grab uh, probably my, just my uh, polished brush and kind of make these look a little bit better. I have a pinch brush that I use. I will sort of skew this up a little bit. And I tend to like to do it just kind of come in quickly and rough that edge out a little bit.
That pinch brush kind of helps uh, make the lines not as straight as you kind of come in here. It gives it, you know, different thickness and stuff as it goes on. It makes it look a little bit more realistic as you can see this looks a lot better than it does down here. So. Now if we grab our pinch again You can see how that makes that look a lot more realistic than it was when it was just the orbs crack
cracks tend to get bigger when they're sort of on corners or toward edges. So we want to make sure we kind of emulate that as well. And on my other screen I do have some references of um, cracked cinder blocks and things like that, kind of getting some inspiration on how stuff cracks in real life, which is important. You know, and it's obviously a fantasy environment, so you got to have some level of imagination, but you don't want to go completely unrealistic too, because that's not going to look good either. Didn't mean to click that, that's going to turn my whole model on, that's not good. I'm just going to open it up for my actual save rather than the quick save. Select. I'd like to have at least one crack on each side for some, uh, you know, just to change up the look a little bit. So let's pick, let's go with this one up here. So that other one was running down like this, so let's make this one different. I'm 
My thing did crash. I'm going to have to go into my brush. When we're on orbs crack. Brush. Tablet pressure. We'll go to that size. We'll just pull this down. Then we'll go to our stroke. Lazy mouse. So you can see that it's on one. We're just going to turn this to 55. Lower our draw size way down. I do it at about an intensity of about 31. And then any higher than that, it starts, you know, if we turn this all the ways up, you can see that's a really, really deep cut. So, you know, if you want something like that, then turn your intensity up. I don't. I find it a little too destructive. So this one I'm going to cut. Maybe something like coming across here. You can see right there if I let off my tablet and then I push back down again, we get this different size right here. So that's why I changed my tablet pressure like that. something like that. And this one's in the middle so I don't really have to worry about that side. Like before we're just gonna grab our brush. You can see the different pushing kind of hard, letting up a little bit harder, and then lightening up a bit, and you get these different sort of depths and sizes, which is really good. You know, and of course, if you want something bigger, just make your brush size bigger. If you want something deeper, just up the intensity. It's really up to you and what you're trying to create. Maybe this part up here has more damage. You want to be careful about hitting the actual crack too much because you start to flatten it out a little bit too much. I'm just going to come back in. Maybe grab our trim smooth the square alpha. Kind of make that a little bit rougher up in here.
pinch. If I can find it. Once you have everything sort of set, you can always come back in with your orbs crack and just kind of redraw it a little bit if you need to thicken that line back up. Because when you tend to kind of come in <clears throat> with the other brushes, you sometimes lose that line and I want to make sure that it looks nice and correct. little like section right here is bothering me for right now so I think I'm gonna fix that I'm actually not gonna worry about it for right now and we're gonna select we're gonna do one more on the side Actually, I think that's good. So we've got some cracks here, we've got some cracks up there. You know, and you want to follow sort of a natural way that stone cracked is, which tends to be, you know, very straight lines. Um, you know, you wouldn't see like a Z pattern or something like that that would make a lot of sense. does happen, but it's not as common. So maybe this one. Maybe this one just has a small one right on the edge, in this corner or something. It's going to come out and come down like this. I keep mousing off because I'm looking at my reference over here. What I want to actually do is I want to make this one thinner than that one.
So same thing, just kind of etching this away. Maybe we'll make this one a lot rougher on this edge up here. Make this look like it's kind of a, a chunk still hanging on up there. damage that up a little bit make it seem like it's been you know beat up and things so this is what's you know this is what's nice because we've we've duplicated so many of these blocks to be reused and now we're coming back in and kind of giving them their own custom look so nothing looks repeated so for instance if we had this block somewhere else now that we're adding the cracks and kind of changing up the surface over here everything looks different So it saves time redoing the same thing over and over and instead you get to focus on adding more details. again, kind of fix this. Pinch. So you can see how you get those nice little details in there without having to spend really that much time.
you know, and it's, you could really add as many cracks as you want if you wanted this to be super broken. You know, you could crack every single one if you wanted to. Really, it just you know depends on what you want to do. I want to get at least one crack on each side, just to kind of give each each face a unique look to it. I do have the small bricks right beneath. Let's see if I can find those. And I better just crashed it again. the new version of OBS a few days ago and ever since then ZBrush has been crashing quite a bit. Not sure if they're related. I kind of want to add one more to this side. So I'm actually pick this one. And let's have this solve this out. And again, I did crash, so I gotta do this again real quick. So, tablet pressure, size, pull this down. We got a stroke, lazy mouse. Actually, let's make sure we're on the right brush before we do that. Don't want to change the wrong brush on ourselves. Be something like that. We're just getting hit with all sorts of spam bots tonight. I don't know what's going on. It gets quite old after a while having to ban all of these.
And don't be afraid to run your orbs crack. You know, once you've got the pattern you like, don't be afraid to run the brush through it a few more times to kind of peel away some of the more stubborn, uh, you know, geometry that might still be there. You can kind of use the details that you've already sculpted to kind of play into the, the cracks as well. I'm just going to run my orbs crack through it a couple more times to clean up any weird issues. Then you can see by upping that lazy mouse to 55 rather than one, I get that nice long tail coming after it, so it really helps me control it. So I get some good looking cracks coming off of there. Save that. I don't like to go too overboard with my cracks. I think adding too many uh, kind of ruins it overall because you kind of start, uh, it makes it too noisy. The cracks are sort of the first things you notice on a lot of models. And so when you add too many, it kind of uh, 
takes away from everything else that you've done, just makes it too busy. to that one just a tiny bit more. And doing the, the pinch brush smaller on certain areas, you can kind of uh, make the, the cracks bigger, you know, in the areas where you don't pinch it, and you can sort of pinch it up more. And it gives that crack a nice, you know, variation in size as it runs along. This side I'll add probably probably one to these upper ones up here. Maybe just a small one down in this corner. Take off this hard edge before I do that. It's kind of interfering with that brush a little bit, so I'm going to come in actually with the, the polish brush, kind of get rid of that. You know, the other good thing about of having these blocks all be duplicates of one another is let's say I'm doing this and I royally screw it up. Like, I hate it, I don't like the look of it, I've ruined this block. Because it's just a copy of another one already, I don't have to worry about all the time I spent into sculpting this one uniquely. I can just simply recopy it from whichever one it is, put it back into place, and I'm back to where I was before I added in the crack. So. It's a much better way to work where you don't have to worry as much about, you know, ruining uh, unique work that you've done. Grab our pinch.
you know, the more times you go over it with the pinch brush, the tighter it's going to be. So, depending on how big you want that crack. Alright, so I think that looks good for now. Like I said, I don't want to add too many. I might add maybe maybe one more, you know, so a total of two on each side or something like that. Um, just so that it's not just the one, but I think that's a good start for now. Now you could always get super fancy with this if you wanted to and mask this off, separate it as a separate object, maybe pull it out, make it look like it's kind of falling off or something like that, but I'm not going to go that crazy on something like this. front pieces real quick, maybe add some cracks to that.
third one I've had to ban out tonight. I don't know what's going on. Maybe we'll run, kind of coming like this, down to here. We'll just run something down here, like right here. Up if I was on the right brush first. This one, not coming up with anything I'm liking. Maybe we'll get a different piece real quick, maybe one of these side pieces. The reason this looks like this is because there's actually a brick that covers this, so you're not even actually seeing that. So, I have to look at some of these. I think I might call it there a night. That's actually over the time that I normally stream on weeknights. So, you got to see a small um, sort of insight into how I do the cracks on my bricks. Cracks on my stone, I guess I should say. Pretty easy process, not really much to it. Um, just a couple brushes here and there, kind of using them in a very specific order to get the look that you want. I'll be continuing on adding some more cracks, finishing up a lot of these pieces next time. I kind of want to add cracks to the base, uh, to the center piece, some of those side pieces that I just showed. Then we'll be finishing up the top and that will be it. We'll be ready to start our low poly. So I hope you enjoyed watching. Um, 
As always, you can check out my YouTube channel for all past videos in case you have missed any. We'll be going through the whole environment in time, so I'll be building the whole uh, Unreal Engine 4 environment that you can see in the polycount link below. We'll be doing a lot with that, lots of different models coming, lots of architecture models, nature models, lots of stuff within the engine like water and textures and stuff like that. So if you're interested in that stuff, uh, make sure to follow, check out my YouTube channel. Oh look, another bot I get to ban. That makes five tonight on some sort of roll here. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Um, as always, I enjoyed streaming, and I hope to see you guys next time. Take care.